Hello, Dr. Lily speaking. I'm in honor of uh, Lily Physical Therapy in Edmonds Way. And I'm here with um, Joe Canane. He is a local attorney he is here in, Ed in Edmonds. And he is expert expert for personal injuries and for disability uh, claims. So today we'll talk about disability claims and we'll try to answer some common questions rel related to long-term and short-term disability and hopefully help our community, um, you know, figure out, you know, what is the best way to claim short-term and long-term disability and um, uh, find solutions to common problems in that process. So, Joe, welcome. Really good to have you here today. Thank you, Dr. Lilly. It's good to see you again. Thank you. So, Joe, can you please tell me a little bit about your education, training, and background? Sure. Um, I received my undergraduate degree at the University of Illinois, uh, Urbana-Champaign. After I uh, received that degree, I uh, worked in Chicago at a personal injury law firm as a legal assistant for about two years. And then I um, started law school at, this, at Seattle University Law School, where I received my JD. After that, I worked for approximately two years in the code revisor's office in Olympia. That's uh, where we draft the uh, bills that turn into laws in the Washington State Legislature. Um, after that, I did private practice, uh, personal injury, and uh, now long-term disability cases. And I've been um, working uh, as a lawyer for over 20 years, um, handling hundreds of cases on the state level and in federal court. Wonderful. It's so good to hear about all your experience and great background. Um, Joe, can you tell me what is that long-term disability? So a long-term disability uh, claim um, or policy basically is an insurance policy where uh, you pay money into an insurance uh, the policy and if you become disabled and you're unable to work, then at that time you file a claim. So if um, you may be eligible to continue receiving most of your salary in the event you become unable to work. Great, it sounds like amazing safety net. Well, yeah, it's very important. And typically there are two ways that a person may have a long-term disability policy. One would be that their employer paid for it and it would be part of their terms of employment or a benefit. Or two, a lot of individuals may buy their own policy, their own long-term disability policy in case they became disabled. And those could be people such as you know, doctors, lawyers, or um, you know, accountants. And if they can't do their job, then they're gonna file a claim. Mm -hmm. So, how does somebody qualify for long-term disability? Um, what kind of condition would actually qualify the person for long-term disability? Right. You know, once a person has a long-term disability policy, then the question is, you know, how would they get on claim? And that's where it can be quite difficult. First, you got to look at the policy and review the policy and see what the terms are. Is this person disabled? Is this person disabled from work? Um, how do we determine that? That's an important, and it's a hard look. Uh, basically, you're gonna look to the medical records, uh, the opinions of the medical doctors, and any other medical professionals that the person might see. Um, so that's how the claim file will be uh, being worked and uh, developed, and typically the claim file is on the insurance company side. A patient or claimant may not know exactly what's in their file. It mm -hmm. will start when they file an application for a long-term disability claim. I see. That's very interesting information. So what is the... I know that there's some, you know, short-term disability claims and long-term disability. And what is actually the difference in between long-term and short-term disability? Well, um... <clears throat> Typically, a short-term disability policy uh, is lasts up to six months of a disability. And the short-term disability would be more focused on the employer side and employer money. 
it may be administrated by the long-term disability insurance company, but up to six months, it could be a different pot of money that they're, the policy is being paid from. Then when it switches over to long-term disability, we're talking about a disability that lasts for longer, up to and longer than a year. So it'll, it'll switch over and it'll be looked at a little bit differently. And again, we'll look back to the policy to determine what needs to be um, done in order to qualify. I see, that, that's very interesting. So what is the difference in between long-term disability and social security disability? Um, so they're similar in a lot of ways um, when it comes to disability, but long-term disability deals more on the employer plan or a self-funded plan that you might have bought through your in employment. And, and uh, Social Security Disability, or SSDI, is more on the U.S. government. It's a federal government plan. So although there may be dealing with similar medical conditions and medical um, records, the way they're looked at and their definitions are different. I see. So, can a person file long-term disability on their own? Yes, they can. Um, if they file on their own, they got to be careful that the claim file is being properly developed or loaded. What's in the claim file determines whether the company decides whether you're disabled, yes or no. If there's not enough evidence or objective findings in the claim file, the company can just say, no, we don't believe you're disabled. Even though mm -hmm. the person may believe they're disabled, their friends and family and coworkers may all be willing to write a letter or testify that they think they've changed and they're disabled. And all the medical records may support a finding of disability. The determination is still uh, relied upon and the determination is uh, made by the long-term disability company. So if you file on your own, you gotta be careful. Uh, there's also a lot of um, time restrictions, constraints, maybe periods that you may be disabled but you may have to wait, some waiting period, so that your disability continues and then they will start paying the claim. Mm -hmm. So there can be some pitfalls for a person if they're completely filing and trying to do it on their own. Wow, that, that's, very, that's very interesting. So can you tell us a little bit more about pitfalls and warning signs when filing long-term disability? I think this is really valuable information for our community. So if you're uh, kind of doing it on your own and working in the long-term disability, uh, your own uh, claim, some warning signs would be, um, one, if the insurance company asks you to attend a medical exam from an examiner of their choice. Typically, those doctors or medical professionals can be quite conservative in how they view disability and whether you meet the definition of disability through their eyes. Mm -hmm. So a medical examination would be something you have to be very careful as to just go in there by yourself without having maybe a nurse or at least having a uh, fellow family member who can be an advocate and, and help you get through that tough process. Another warning sign would be uh, is if the, the insurance company asked you for an in-person interview, especially at your own home. You could be at quite a disadvantage if you're sitting at your you know, dining room table and this examiner or interviewer is looking at your photos which may have been taken many years ago of you doing something physically active. And they could kind of take the advantage of your experience and ask you questions and later can be used to determine that you're not disabled. So I'd highly recommend if you're gonna do an interview with this insurance company regarding your long-term disability claim, that you go, um, go to a, a different place other than your own home. Wow. Maybe at least a, a, a place that's more neutral. That's a really, really good advice. Yeah, and then the other thing that comes up in these cases is surveillance. 
potentially a private investigator can be hired by this long-term disability company to either photograph or to videotape you doing activities hmm. such as leaving your home and going to your mailbox or leaving your home and going to the store. So if you file a long-term disability claim, you should be careful what you're doing outside of the house because they may take some photos or video of you and later use that to say, hey, the person can go to their car, they can walk to the store, therefore they should be able to work. Wow, that's really, really interesting. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's um, really amazing information and surprising in some ways. And Joe, we talked a little bit before uh, we started recording and you gave me, you know, you told me a few things about, you know, group disability insurance filing and paperwork and can you actually share some of that information with our audience? That's right. I, I brought in a, a typical uh, disability insurance uh, questionnaire that uh, one of the companies would send to a doctor uh, for the doctor to fill out the form. And there's some problems with the form. In particular, there's only boxes to be checked. And some doctors may be afraid to go outside of the box and check one way or the other that may be supportive of your case. And if the doctor fills this out in a way um, that is uh, not beneficial to your case, this form could be used to um, deny your claim. You gotta ask yourself, who, who wrote the form? And the insurance companies write the form. So they'll say questions like, um, when do you estimate the patient will be capable of full-time return to work? The doctor may say, well, maybe three to six months, but they may, may not be sure. So if the doctor puts six months in this form, you can better be sure that the insurance company thinks in six months you need to go back to work. There's also other challenges in the form um, that's very specific. Um, if you turn over to page two, there's um, issues about uh, how the physician has to certify this form and whether the, um, the symptoms are related on the patient's self-reported symptoms or objective findings. You know, frankly, a doctor may not know a lot about the patient if they've only seen the patient a few times. And the way this letter, this form is written, it could be somewhat intimidating for a doctor to have to fill this out and send it back in uh, and if they don't fill it out and send it back in, then the insurance company will use that lack of response against you. Hmm. Wow. So you gotta be really careful. A recommendation I have is if your doctor gets one of these forms and it's a long-term disability form, a physician statement, and your doctor lets you know, maybe schedule an exam to go in and try to assist the doctor in filling this form out before the doctor sends it in. And right. before he or she sends it in, maybe take a photocopy with your camera phone or ask mm -hmm. for a copy so you have it yourself, so you know what went in. Uh, the other thing um, that's kind of interesting is this, this form that the doctor's supposed to fill out, uh, the insurance company doesn't pay for the doctor's time. Mm -hmm. You have to pay for the time. Right. So you know that. Um, and so it's kind of interesting. They want the form filled out, but you as an individual, as a claimant to this uh, insurance policy, you have to fill it out to show, your, show the evidence. Right, right. But scheduling appointment with the doctor, being present for um, intake of information and completing this form actually helps you, helps the client actually or patient you know get the best um, information and then the um, cost of the time or um, you know filling paperwork a fee covered right right well so if the person's disabled and they're under active care that's one of the most important things so that they don't gap out they should be regularly going to see their doctor whether it's the primary care doctor or a specialist say a rheumatologist or a neurologist right. and a physical therapist, hopefully all that team is working together for that patient and mm -hmm. that claimant, and that's helping build the claim file. Mm -hmm. You need to get in 
and show that there's something going on, maybe a condition changed or you have a new condition or illness and that's documented in the records, that's probably one of the most important things. If it's in your medical records, it should be going into the claim file and that's, that's, that would be a big goal if you want to be successful in one of these claims. True, true. Right? Consistency of care, showing up for all your appointments and document, document, document. That's right. Wonderful. To make your case strong. Um, Joe, can you tell us, you know, when the person should hire an attorney for a long-term disability claim? When we need help. Right. Um, it's hard to see, um, you know, different time, different cases have different time restraints. Uh, so it's probably pretty important to get an attorney involved at least to consult with what your rights and options are and because each disability plan can be a little different. Mm -hmm. If a person has filed for a short-term disability case or claim and they're on claim and it's going okay and they're getting the treatment, they're probably kind of okay. But when it switches over from short-term disability to long-term disability is usually when a lot of the fights can occur. Right. So consulting early and getting your case kind of developed and building the claim file is usually better sooner rather than later. Uh, there's an old saying that says, um, it's never too early to hire an attorney, but it can be too late. Absolutely. So there are potential statute of limitations with these long-term disability cases and claims. So discussing or calling an attorney to, to talk to somebody who knows these, these files and these claims, there's, there's, it doesn't cost you anything typically to consult over the phone to see whether he or she, that attorney, can, believes they can help you. That's a really good advice. Yeah, it's never too early, but it can't, it can't be, be too late. late. Yes, I think that goes uh, in a lot of, a lot of uh, parts of our life, including the medical side. That's so true. Yeah. You should never wait too long. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, you can sleep on your rights and then find out it's too late, or you still have a little time to file, but there's not enough time to help develop the case in the right way and build, you know, a strong foundation so you do have a, a solid, uh, solid claim. Solid case, yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe, if we need, if our community and our patients and clients, you know, need help with long-term or short-term disability claim, how they co can contact you? Well, they can contact me at my office, and the phone number is 425-672-7100. My office is in Edmonds, uh, so local uh, attorney I'm right by the ferry dock. They can come down and see my office and see me. Uh, they can also check me out on my website. It's uh, www.cunnelaw.com. So it's canainlaw.com. They can go on my website, check out other you know, uh, videos of testimonials from other clients that have helped, and uh, give me a call, because I'd, I'd be happy to talk to them. Sounds great. Okay. Well, Joe, thank you so much for your time and for this great piece of advice. And um, I personally recommend Joe uh, as a great attorney, both for, for personal injuries, you know, if you get in a motor vehicle accident or you have a disability claim, you know, you should contact Joe as soon as possible because, again, it's, um, it can be too late and it's never too early. That's right. Well, thank you, Lily. It's nice seeing you again. It's always thank a pleasure you. being here in your office. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks.